Hi, Diane Evans here with StampinWithDiane.com. I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So if you've joined me through YouTube, welcome. And also, if you've never subscribed before, make sure that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And by doing that, you're going to get notified when I upload videos. And if you want to get notified immediately when I upload a video, all you have to do is hit the bell that's right down below, and you'll get notified immediately. So today what I want to do is I want to show you an embossing folder technique. Now this one's a little bit, I, I would say, not off the wall, but you may not have seen this one too often. It's something that I've done once in a while, but not too, not that I've really done and gone to show it. And I'll show you a couple of other samples that I've done with it. Not samples of cards, but samples of what it looks like. So I, I'm going to get the card ready first, um, like go through the card parts, and then I'm going to show you this technique. And what it is, we are embossing with an embossing folder on an embossed surface. Sounds, sounds different, doesn't it? So anyways, we've got some evening evergreen. It's um, four and a quarter by 11 and a half, by 11, and I've scored it at five and a half. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold that right on that score line there. And so we've got a really good fold there. Now, I, I don't know if this is going to turn into a masculine card. I'm not sure what it's going to turn into, but I have some crumb cake. Now, these are strange measurements, and I'm just forewarning you because I just want a tiny bit of a, uh, a border around it. But because of what really happened was... I had used, made a frame, and I'd used a frame making, um, this frame here is using the, let me see, it is using the second and the fifth, I believe, this die to cut. So the second and the fifth die to make this particular frame. And in order to get the sizes done correctly, I went and I wanted to have just that little bit of a border around here so by doing that I had to go off of the size of the rectangles. So this piece of crumb cake is three and thirteen sixteenths by five and an eighth and then to get that eighth of an eighth inch difference with this evening evergreen I did three and eleven sixteenths by five inches. Now you've noticed that there's a bit of embossing on here and this is using that evergreen forest 3d embossing folder and that's the embossing folder that i thought would look that would look really good with this particular card so like i say we've got a bit of different things kind of going on there but i just i just want you to see that this is the basis of it and of course what i would do too is i would put something on the inside but for this purpose of this card we are just going to do the front part of the card I know this looks a little strange, but trust me, when I'm finished with it, it's going to all come together. So, we are also using the meadow dies on here. So, I've, we're really combining a bunch of different things all together. So, let me just get this card base all put together. And, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and use the adhesive glue. Because, you know what, I really like the fact that because it's really... Um, a finer uh, or a smaller um, layering thing. I like to use the, the glue so that I can move it around and get it positioned. It gives me that wiggle room, right? So let's see if we've got that in the middle. And then this is embossed, like I say, with that. So, and it's quite thick embossed. It's, so I am using the glue to get it all put together. I really like the combination of these colors. You know, another color this really goes good with is Mary Merlot as well. Okay, so we've got that. We've kind of got this part sort of done. I've gone ahead and I've cut out some of these dies. So they're just these ones here. We're going to decide what we're going to use when it come, when we come down to it. So now let's do the technique. So like I say, I've got a frame and it's just in basic black. And I'm going to come in. I'm not going to use an embossing buddy because I don't need to use an embossing buddy with this particular technique. So I'm taking my Versamark 
and I'm going to get this good and inked up. Because I want to do the whole frame in embossing powder. So I'm just inking all of it. And then I'm going to come in with my gold embossing powder. I keep mine in a tub. I'm so glad that they've brought back a couple of colors. And one of the colors I'm really happy with is the copper. But for this particular card, we are using gold. And I used, I put it into tubs. I just find it works so much better for me. So let's just get this loaded up here. Now, I, I don't want to get my fingerprints on here. And we're just going to blow that off. There we go. And now I'm going to come in with my take your pick tool. And I'm going to kind of hold this in place, but I'm not going to try to, I don't want to get it so that it touches any of that part there. So I'm going to bring in my heat tool. Remember your heat tool has two um, uh, speeds to it. The first speed is for drying. The second speed is for embossing. I apologize about the noise, but we do need to do this for this particular technique. So I'm just going to come in. You don't want to wave it. You just want um, to just get it started. And it goes quite quickly once it's already started. So, And it's so important that we don't overcook this. Now with this technique also, it's going to tend to, because I'm using it, you notice I used it on a black paper. And see, I used, I rubbed that. I did that with the heat gun. So I'm going to have to go back in and cover that up. Actually, it's probably not going to show too much on there. That was little annoying and I think it's it's going to change the look of this but that's okay we're going to go in and I'm going to just going to heat that part up again oh, it's not going to be enough there so I'm going to have to go in with my Versamark again it wasn't warm enough to do that so let me just go in and get some more gold on there this is going to end up I should almost do all of it where this might make this a little bit shinier on that particular part. But this technique is going to work okay with it and it's going to get covered up a bit, so. There we go, I just covered that part up. There we go. All right, so now I want to let that dry, or not dry, but cool down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, and I have to bring in my big cut and emboss because this is a 3D embossing folder. Plus it's also a six by six, so it has a double whammy on it. So we wanna make sure that that's quite cool. So I'll bring in my big cut and emboss and hopefully we're not too close with this. And because it is a 3D, we have to use a specialty plate. Let's just take all of these off. And we'll take this one off as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Now, is this cool enough? Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I'm just going to go in, and I'm going to line this up in my embossing folder. So well, let's just put that in. Now, I've got it... It'll be fine. Okay, now we put this down with the hinge in first, and then with this specialty number four plate, we're just going to run that through. Goodness, I'm not sure why that's so tough on there. There we go. Let's just move that out of the way. 
And now I'm going to just take this off. Now, this is a very, very deep embossing folder. So you have to be really careful when you take this frame off with that embossing powder. And the reason being for that is it could rip. Now see what that's done is that's given us a frame that has that thing on there. So that is the technique. And because I use black paper, um, cardstock below, that's what kind of gives it a bit of a brushed gold look. So then this part is gonna go on here. Now, originally when I did this card, I didn't have any embossing in there and I didn't like the way it looked. So that's why I put the embossing on there. So I'm gonna come in now with my black dimensionals and I'm going to put those onto here. If I had enough of the strips, I could have used the strips on there too. Let's see, we're gonna put one there. So we're good for the next one, that's for sure. And then let's just take our take your pick tool. And take these off. It's kind of messy on the back side, but that's okay because that's all covered. We're not going to see that part there. And now I'm just going to layer this on here. Now, one thing to be sure of is that you have, if there is a direction on this, see how that goes? It's just like that. I think this is quite a rich type card. So then I have these that are cut, like I say, from the meadow dies. And I'm just going to actually layer them on here and then I'm gonna go in and cut them afterwards. Now, this is the pale papaya. I love it with that green, but I'm thinking to myself that, I wanna first of all get this off, that I want to, um, this is just too clean of the pale papaya. So I'm actually gonna come in with my blending brush and I think I'm going to use some crumb cake with the blending brush. And I always put it in here so it's not quite, you know, um, the real dark color. And also we can use it, right? We keep using it. And like I say, I just want to sponge this a bit. Just kind of take off that really bright color on there is all I, my attempt is to do with this. That looks a little bit better. Yeah. All right. So let's go. And then I've got all these other ones cut, but I think this is the best way of doing this. So I am going to go in and you see this is popped up there so I'm going to actually go in with my little black dimensionals oh, there. I have some issues here I went and I put something on there with glue and now oh this is going to be a real mess oh dear so this is going to be on here I have to put some uh, some sort of a Thing on there so it doesn't all right so that is going to go on there but I'm going to glue on this part here and I think we can also glue on this part right here and then I'm going to leave this in such a spot that I can turn around and cut off this, this part down here now I'm going to come in with this pale papaya one and I'm going to use these black dimensionals as well because it's going onto a dark surface. So when I go on here, I can put one down here. Um, I can put another one there and probably one here as well. 
can see where else I could put some. But you see, by putting them like that, oh, I want to get this part out there too. I can now go in and glue on this part here. We could have put one underneath there. That might have been a smart move to do. I'm just going to put one underneath this top one up here. There we go. All right. And then I also have this shimmery gold. And I'm actually going to, I'm not going to really pop that up. I'm going to glue that on. Let's just put that like that. Okay. Whoops. Oops. Oops. Sticking to me. All right, so there we have that part. Now I had some, I have my sentiment um, layer right there, but I also had, here we go, I had some of this fantastic um, chevron weave ribbon here. So I think what I'll do is I'll just cut this part off because. I'm not going to tie it as a bow, but I'm going to tie it as a knot. But I'm also bringing in this elegant trim as well. And I'm going to tie that in here. And we're going to tie it into a knot. Let's just get that in there. And this one goes in there as well. And the only reason I wanted to have the gold in there too is so that you can kind of see. This should have been around to the front part of this. That'll work there. Now that cording is tending to make the knot not tie tight. I'm just going to cut that off. I want to cut that so that that's straight. I should have had my ribbon scissors down here. You know what? I have my other really sharp scissors here. I'll just use these to cut this. Same with here and cut this trim off there. All right, so then I want to just go in here and we're just going to put this down here. So I am going to trim this part off down here and then I'm going to attach this with some glue dots. off a little bit more there we go so that's just going to go on there and it just sort of gives us that gold look you know i can so i'm just going to come in with my glue dots this is quite a big knot so i think i'll put a couple of dots in there and I'm going to kind of get it so that it's in that frame part so that it's not sticking up so much I can trim that off in a bit all right so now what I have to do is I have to figure out how I'm going to um, how I'm going to put in a sentiment now originally I had had a just because sentiment and you know I've already 
done that. So let's use a just because. Now, where this stamp set came from was from Lovely You. And I love this just because. I love the font on it. I, yeah. So I'm just coming in with my embossing buddy. And let's use our Versamark. And I'm just going to dip it back in that gold. And then let's just heat set that. But what a neat technique to do with this embossing powder. Oops, here we go. And then I'm just going to fussy cut that out. This evening evergreen is such a beautiful color. It, uh, I find it, it's a rich color. I find it to be, um, it's, it's an understated elegant, elegance, I think. Well, that just gave me an idea that I thought that maybe it might be a good idea to. All right. So now I can go ahead and I'm going to put that on with some black dimensionals again. It's going to go on that side. Somebody's going to think it's a little mouse in my dimensionals. Oops, it's on the wrong side. Now that's just going to go across there, just like that. So there's the card. That, using the embossing thing, I want to show you a couple of other things that I had used. This was used, the fancy flowers that I had done, and that's done with the black as well. And also I had done it with silver, which shows you it's quite a bit different with the silver. And then I'd also gone ahead and used the inside of that part. But you can see where this tore. So in any event, I hope you like that. If you do, give me the thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, just ask away and I will answer them. Also, another thing is um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you live in Canada, I'd love to be your demonstrator if you do not have one already or one that you're working with. I have a very generous reward program, so um, you can check that out on the blog link below. All these measurements also will be in the um, in, on the blog, but also another thing is, is um, use the host code and I give away tutorials each and every month. So I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that um, that's inspired you to try this technique. Anyways, have a great day and bye for now.